we're asked to determine if the following three by three matrices are invertible or non-singular. A matrix is invertible if it has an inverse matrix. Looking at the notes below, matrix A is invertible or non-singular if matrix A is an n by n matrix, so the matrix must be a square matrix, such that A times some matrix B equals B times A, which equals I, the identity matrix. Where again, I sub n, is the identity matrix and B is the inverse of matrix A and we write B equals A inverse using this notation here. The easiest way to determine if a square matrix is invertible is by using the determinant. If matrix A is invertible or non-singular, then the determinant of matrix A does not equal zero. So we'll find the determinant of matrix A and matrix C to determine if it is invertible or non-singular. For a quick review, there are two main methods to find a determinant. The diagonal method, which is shown here, will find one determinant using this method, and also the method of expansion by minors, often called the method of cofactors. And we'll find the second determinant using this method here for review. So going back to our question, let's first find the determinant of matrix A using the diagonal method. So to apply the diagonal method to find the determinant, we first copy down the elements from matrix A, and then we copy down column one and column two again to the right of column three. So column one is one, three, negative one, and column two is negative two, five, three. And there are three diagonals from the upper left to the lower right, and three diagonals from the upper right to the lower left. So from the upper right to the lower left, here's one, two, three diagonals, and then from the upper right to the lower left, we also have three diagonals, one, two, and three. So to find the value of the determinant of matrix A, we want to find the sum of the products of the diagonals from the upper left to the lower right, or the blue ones, and then subtract the sum of the products of the diagonals from the upper right to the lower left, or the green diagonals. So looking at the diagonals from the upper left to the lower right, we have one times five times negative four, that's negative 20, plus negative two times two times negative one, that's positive four, plus three times three times three, that's 27. And then we have minus, now we want to find the sum of the products of the diagonals from the upper right to the lower left, or the green diagonals. So we have three times five times negative one, that's negative 15, plus one times two times three, that's six, plus negative two times three times negative four, that's positive 24. Now simplifying, here we have negative 20 plus four plus 27, that's 11, minus, here we have negative 15 plus six plus 24, that's positive 15. 11 minus 15 equals negative four, which does not equal zero which means matrix A is invertible or non-singular, meaning matrix A does have an inverse, where A times A inverse, or A inverse times A, would be equal to the three by three identity matrix. Notice in this question, we're not asked to find the inverse matrix. So we just say matrix A is invertible. And now we'll find the determinant of matrix C, but for this determinant, let's use the expansion by minors method or the method of cofactors given here. You may want to pause this, but if we use this first row for the expansion by minors, we can use this formula here to evaluate the determinant of the three by three matrix. So the determinant of matrix C is going to be equal to, going across the first row we'd have one, and then we're going to multiply this by a two by two determinant, where the elements in this determinant are found by eliminating the row and column of element one, so we eliminate row one, column one, leaving us with these four elements. So we have seven, negative 10, 16, negative 21. And then we have minus, again going across row one, the next element is two, and we'll have times a two by two determinant. Where to find the elements in this determinant, we eliminate the row and column of this element here, so we eliminate row one, column two. So we have three, negative 10, seven, negative 21. 
and then we have plus, the last element in row one is negative one, so we'll have plus and then negative one times a two by two determinant formed by eliminating row one and now column three. So we have three, seven, seven, sixteen. And now to evaluate each two by two determinant, we'll find this product minus this product. So here we have one times, we have seven times negative twenty-one, which is equal to negative one hundred forty-seven minus negative ten times sixteen, that's minus negative one hundred sixty, which equals positive thirteen. So here we have one times thirteen minus two times, here we have three times negative twenty-one, that's negative sixty-three minus negative ten times seven, that's negative seventy. This simplifies the positive seven. So we have minus two times seven. And let's write this as just minus one times, here we have three times sixteen, that's forty-eight, minus seven times seven, that's forty-nine, which equals negative one. Simplifying one last time, here we have thirteen minus fourteen plus one, which equals zero. So here the determinant of matrix A is equal to zero, which means matrix C is not invertible, meaning matrix C does not have an inverse. So we'll say matrix C is not invertible. We can also say that matrix C is singular because if a matrix is invertible, we can say it's non-singular. I hope you found this helpful.